All right, everybody, welcome to the uh, the second said episode of West Side Story. Um, we are here today with my lovely wife and uh, all around good gal, Anya Piper. Hey. Not your average hockey fan. And on the phone, calling uh, direct from a shuttle lot over in the Seattle West Side area, one Mr. Dan Brown. Hola. There he is. There he is. Doing all right over there today, bud? I'm doing all right. You know, it's a little rainy on this side of the this side of the mountains, but you know, that's nothing new. Yeah. All right. It's getting cold here. We're supposed to have some snow this week. So, uh Yeah, us, us too. What the hell is up with that? I'm all for yeah. it. <laughs> D- okay, so yeah. so Anya loves the snow. I like the snow. I cannot for the life of me, Seattle comes to a complete standstill when it snows there. Too many hills. Yeah. Uh, yes. A couple times leaving uh, Harborview Medical Center. I know that that hill there scares the shit out of me thinking about with ice and snow on it. So. Oh, yeah. People have been snowboarding down that hill a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. Perfect. All right. Well, we are. In, well, by the time this airs, it'll be uh, Black Friday, but we're in Thanksgiving week here. Everybody is super, super busy. Um, but there's a lot going on, so we want to to kick it off with a few things. If people listening have not heard, uh, quite a few things have happened over the last couple of weeks in the women's hockey world. Um, one Miss Hillary Knight, quote unquote, fired shots across the bow <laughs> of the NWHL. Uh I guys, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm going to just throw the quote out as I understand it. Then you can go at it. She pretty much said the NWHL is a glorified beer league. Would you care to comment, Mrs. Piper? <laughs> um, I just think it's got to be careful with what you say. You're trying to fight for a better league for you, for her, for all the girls that want to play professional hockey. And you got to be careful what you say. It's just ridiculous um, what things can be said what can be misconstrued and all that fun stuff so i just think that she was wrong i think she's inaccurate i don't think it's necessarily glorified beer league because what are you fighting for i mean if it's just a glorified beer league then why fight for that i don't know what do you think right Right? yeah i um i i got mixed feelings on it yeah um um i you know she has her opinion and things like that but arguably as the as, as arguably the the most prevalent figure in female hockey, yeah. I feel like you got you got to be dip, more diplomatic than that. Absolutely, because there are other ways to say that. And like Kendall Coyne said in the an article that I read, where those shots were fired and things like that, said, you know, we just want to leave. Paraphrasing, we just want to leave the game better than it was. And I feel like that's arguably a better way to say that rather than saying it was a glorified beer league because that doesn't yeah. discredit. I mean, the full quote was not that these aren't elite lo- or not that these aren't good players, but they're not elite level players mm. was her point. <clears throat> well, that's so- interesting. Yeah. OK, I I didn't I don't know if I necessarily took it that way. But now that you say it, I am. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like, that's true. Like, I don't know. That makes me not like it anymore. I don't I just. Yeah. Oh, it irks me. It's like you're fighting for something that you want to make it sustainable. You want it to be professional and you want it to go places and you're making it better for the league, you know, for tomorrow's girls who want to come and play and stuff like that. But you can't, you've got to be smart, especially if you're in the kind of, if you're in the limelight like that you, and whether you want to or not, you just got to do it smart. Hillary Knight is arguably like top five most recognizable <laughs> women's hockey player in the world um so she's probably top top mm, probably top 50 from nike sponsored athletes no, that, with all the wow that's huge. With, with all the olympics so if you think about it i mean i've got nothing to base that on but just yeah. thinking about who their staff of athletes are yeah like with the success of the u.s women's national team um you know She's up there. Yeah. She's got to be top 100 at least. And you know what? They're only not, they're just in their five years for the NWHL. It's like, I don't, I don't understand this boycott because where did the NHL come when they first came? They only had six teams. 
Yeah. They didn't, I mean, they they had to work and it took years before it grew and became better. And be, I mean, I don't know. I just, it's going to take a lot of time. And I think it's really cool that, you know, the NWHL sponsorship with the funding with the investors. I mean, that's so cool. Right. Yeah. Before we, before we jump to that, like to me, your analogy about the original six is pretty pretty similar here because yeah. you know you had the pacific coast hockey association you had the nhl it was very kind of localized now granted they've spread it out in some cases globally with uh the the team in china for the cwhl before they folded but it is a growth thing and just last podcast a couple of weeks ago we were talking about hey isn't it so nice that they're all working together yeah and, not... <laughs> <laughs> and then like the next day i'm like ah oh, man i know I, mean, I was just gonna say that's what got me i was so impressed with with you know you had talked a lot about how there wasn't a lot of animosity and stuff like that. This just kind of felt like a black eye to the whole effort. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And then, uh, you know, with the sponsorship deal, that's kind of NWHL countering and said, Hey, really? Cause we got 20 investors, yeah. including form, former devils, uh, co-owner, former IMG live CEO, um, Andrew Skirto. I mean, it's no slouches as far as investment and they've made it clear that they want to do with the NWHL what the NHL did yes. from the original six and expand it, and they aren't playing around with it. So maybe they, maybe they quickened up the old pace to <laughs> to get that out <laughs> maybe. in the world. But <laughs> yeah, like they were they were saying, okay, glorified beer league. Does a glorified beer league get this much amount of funding available for it? Yeah. I and think, that's not to know. say, I know they need a, there's still a lot more that needs to be done. Um, I know that there's still a lot more, ugh, I don't even know what the word is, but like ultimately there's still a lot of work to be done. I mean, you're not even five years old yet or just barely five years old, I think is the right way to say it. But um, just, you know, you gotta, you gotta work and it's going to not just require one or two people, but it's going to require a lot and all the players coming together and unified to become this great women's hockey league. Right. Yeah. And I don't know, I don't know whether it was uh, Budweiser Canada who really kind of upped the pace, but it's, it's definitely it from what it seemed like previously, which was like one unified group. Like we understand you have to play to, uh, we're going to go strike for what we need to make this a better game. From the outside looking in, it really looks like two kind of separate factions now. Yes, and you know um, what? I said a comment to Aaron the other day. I was like, you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if the PWP, PWHPA comes out and they're their own league. I mean, they got Budweiser Canada behind them. I think they got another, or Secret, was that deodorant? Did they get behind them? And like, it's like with the the say. recent game that they just played was sponsored by Secret or something. And like, they're getting yeah. all these sponsors for them. So I'm like, I wouldn't be surprised if they turn into their own league. <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest. Or is it, or is it two sides of the same coin where they're both pushing each other in public, but really trying to force the hand of the NHL to do uh, with the, True. Um, the NWHL what happened with the WNBA? I don't know. It's all. It's all really interesting, though, that they turned on a dime like that, and that uh, I don't know. I feel like I feel like uh, that's a pretty hurtful uh, comment from Hillary Knight for all those women that are playing for yep. the NWHL teams. My, I'm going to throw this out, and then we'll kind of move on. Um, let's just make sure whoever's listening, whoever's involved, let's not make decisions based solely on emotions. There's got to be. If for longevity's sake, it's got to be emotion. Yeah, it's got to be emotion. It's got to be decisions made on facts. It's got to be decisions made on sustainability. Um, if they're patient in it, it will happen, and it will be the best for everyone involved, in my opinion. So I've seen. I've just seen too many things where emotion takes the the larger scale of the decision making process, and it things kind of fold. So. Um, oh yeah. I, I Absolutely. Don't, I don't want to see that happen again. So. No. Um, no. With that being said, um, NWHL action hopped back up after their their break for what was supposed to be the uh, Four Nations tournament, um, but uh, ended up being more of the rivalry series, which was uh, which was fun. Yeah, I believe Canada 
won every game. Is that correct? Yeah, they won both. That's correct. Um, and w- at one point, wasn't it like it looked like Canada was going to run away with the game, and then the U.S. kind of came in and made a game out of it? What? What? I don't remember all the the recaps. You were telling me at one point. I was watching. We the were Twitter, at Starbucks that one because it was on Hockey TV. So I was watching the Twitter feed of it all because I don't want to watch or pay for Hockey TV. <laughs> Their feed is not very good. <laughs> That's fair. Did you get to check it out, the game? I didn't get to check it out. I had uh, too many too many irons in the fire, as they say. Um, but uh, followed up with some of the some of the highlights and things like that, and it did seem like um, the U.S. was getting outclassed in both games a little bit, and then yeah. they they started coming back, making a game out of it. But you know, it's this isn't. These are always heated matches, but uh, but um, not exactly. Didn't seem like the U.S. came to play as much. In, no, in either that one, yep. from what I saw. Huh. And who knows? Maybe it was a bad weekend. <laughs> yeah, let's just hope that when it gets over here on the third and the fifth of February in Victoria and Vancouver. Get your tickets if you haven't already. Yeah. By the way, if if you go out to Ticketmaster, they have men's hockey as the picture for purchasing oh my tickets. God. Are you serious? Dead serious. That so, is you know, horrible. If, if you want to stick a hook finger at Ticketmaster, uh, feel free. But way to go, that, Ticketmaster. <laughs> right. Hopefully they'll have it together. Uh, the U.S. will have it together by the time they get out here in February. You know, I do have a quick question with the the, the Canada um, USA rivalry series. So the players that have boycotted the NWHL, the Americans and Canadians, whatever, do they like? Are they are some of them on the same like team for USA? I don't even know if I'm asking this correctly. Are you saying like the people that so like there are players on the USA team that are on on the PWHA? Or PWPH. Yeah, and then the NWHL. I too many words. I know it's too many acronyms, so I was like blah blah blah. But do they have to come together and play on the same USA team or the same Canada team? You know, I did not take a close enough look at the rosters. Neither did I, and that's what I just was thinking about it, and I would be curious how that because I wonder. Are you saying are the PWHPA and NWHL teams mixed up together? Yeah, on the Canada USA because if maybe that's one of the reasons why the USA didn't come together because if there's no chemistry there and there's maybe kind of some kind of animosity or rift between these two people and they're on the same USA team. I don't know. Just something to throw out there to think about. We'll have to do some research and look. Yeah. Let's go take a look at that. Cause I regret to say that I did not already take a look at that. Well, um, me either. I just seem, thought about it. <laughs> it would seem like with the NWHL currently playing um, as well as the PWHPA also playing, like I, I don't know that that there's crossover there, but I don't know. Let's go take a look. Yeah, for sure. I don't want to don't want to say something incorrect. Interesting. Absolutely. We'll check on that for the next one. If yeah. any any listeners uh, have any insight, you know, definitely reach out and let us know. Um, after that rivalry series was over, we moved back into what is called the uh, the Boston Pride Show, yeah. um, <laughs> also known as the NWHL regular season this year. The Pride. Continue to win. That's really all we can say about it. And yeah. every time, it's funny. And they dominate. Well, it's funny because Anya, she's constantly walking around now with her phone with Twitch on there watching the games. And I'm just here. I hear her all the time going, oh, come on. Come on, somebody. Come on. It's constant just Boston <laughs> winning everything. And I have to laugh at it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Speaking of Twitch, their numbers uh, for an engagement were really good last weekend, too. I so did that see kind that. Of- that kind of partnership is still working out for him, which is great to hear um, for the NWHL and all those players. Yep, I think that's great. And, I mean, like I said, I can watch it from anywhere. I have it on my phone, so whether I'm making dinner, getting ready to leave or whatever, it's with me all the time, and I can watch it, and I don't miss a game. I can even watch it when I'm in church. I mean, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> right? Kurt cursing in the yeah. background. <laughs> Uh, yeah, right. I was um, making dinner the other night watching watching some of the games and it was just kind of like this is really nice. Now, did I read right that um the pride, I think it was against the White Caps was a shutout, is that correct? Uh, I believe so. I think that was the one was that the one where McKenna Brand scored 
two goals in 13 seconds. Yes. That was I pretty mean, cool. Which is a, she's which is a record, up. right? That's a record, yes. Yes, and it's uh, she's also the leader in points and goals. And if you look at the stats for the NWHL, it's pretty much littered with uh, with the Boston Pride. Yes, so her line I know. mates, other lines, it's just they're just slaying it. I know, and I I keep I root for. I mean, I don't have a favorite team. I don't. Not even the NWHL. Not even like locally here in our WHL that we go and watch. I don't necessarily root for the team. I just love hockey and I love going to watch it. So I'm over here though rooting for the underdog. <laughs> I'm like, I, right. I think it's awesome that the Pride are just doing great and just dominating and stuff like that. But it's like, man, as a if I was not a you know Boston Pride fan, I would be like, I don't even want to watch this anymore because they just are getting slaughtered. Right, right. And that kind of gives credence to what Hillary was saying. But, yeah. you know, regard, regardless of that, if True. you're just looking in on it, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, well, it seems like that. Regardless of the fact that Boston is just stacked and playing really well. Um, my, but, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, but the other matchup this past weekend was the two games between the Isabel Cup champions and runners yeah. up last, where you had the, the Buttes, the Buffalo Buttes and the white caps playing each other back to back and splitting the series uh, yep. with a four, three, four, three win and OT for the Buttes. And then uh, the white caps, uh, I got to say, they don't look like slouches. No, they fight hard. Um, five, three was the white caps over the Buttes in that, that weekend game. Was that all, it was every team in action this past weekend or were those the only couple games that went on? The riveters did not play this riveters weekend. Riveters did not play. Okay. Because yeah, Riveters saw, had a bye week. I, I saw on Twitter that Anya Packer and Madison Packer were playing Xbox. Oh, that's right. That's right. She showed me the picture <laughs> yeah. of that. I just love that her name is Anya so much. I don't I've right. been hearing my name a lot, a lot more lately. Um, but it's like when I saw that her name and she's involved with hockey, she, you know, I just thought it was cool. But anyways, I wanted to throw that out. <laughs> yeah. Even if you're even if you're not a women's hockey fan, those two are uh, are a fun follow. Yes, they are for sure. I've been following them for a long time and conversing back and forth with them with them on certain things and uh, and they're a good good couple of folks to follow. That's awesome. Uh, I noticed you threw something in here uh, when we were kind of comparing notes that I I hadn't heard at all. The founder and commissioner Danny Rylan, uh, that's of the NWHL. Correct. Yeah, and uh, she was just named uh, to Fast Company's Impact Council. Yeah, so it was just came out today. It was kind of last minute that I picked it up. Um, but yeah, she was, uh, the Impact Council is headed by a woman named Stephanie, and I forget her last name, which is terrible, but uh, <laughs> none, nonetheless, it is what it is. Um, but uh, she was named to this Impact Council, which is pushing things forward and progressing and uh, kind of a forward-thinking um space within fast company which if fast company is everything from it to sports and and everything in between but it's all centered around uh centered around being forward thinking and agile and impactful yeah I've, i'm familiar i've um i've been following their magazine they used to have a subscription to it but um i i read a lot of their articles and stuff and and they do do a lot very much at the forefront uh, of a lot of, of direction that business is going, um, which is really good. So that, that is awesome. Um, I don't know. Is there anything else really in, in the women's hockey world that we didn't cover? I mean, we could have talked Hillary Knight for half an hour. Yes. Yeah, for um, sure. Let's, uh, let's move on to, to, uh, some local hockey news. Yeah, that's uh, my favorite. I think we are deep, 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 Deep into the WHL season now, um, we're past the quarter mark. Things are starting to shake out. A couple things we're starting to see. Uh, let's talk specifically U.S. division. Um, in fact, let's just focus always on the U.S. division because that's what we're most familiar with. Um, Portland and Everett are both kind of starting to pull away from the pack here. Um, <laughs> your note was right when you talked about a heartbreaking loss last night in overtime. For the Tri City Americans, uh, let me just say that most games right now are heartbreaking. Uh, <laughs> right. Watching the Tri City Americans, I three games they, this weekend, all three of them they scored first, all three of them they lost. 
At least you're not a Seattle fan. <laughs> That's true. You know, uh, sorry, I, Thunderbirds fans. <laughs> Thunderbirds, they are definitely in a rebuild right now, and I'm with you on that. They're gonna be fine. Um, it's kind of funny watching Kelty Jerry Leone do really well because he was over here um, his rookie season. He got drafted here by the Americans and then moved around a little bit and has now ended in Seattle. And every time I see Seattle here and him on the ice, it looks like he just wants to hurt somebody. Uh, so um, yeah. Who knows? I, I I don't know. I don't You'd know be, the whole, the whole story behind did, that. Were you watching, or did you see the footage of the of the loss last night? I did see the highlights from. You're talking about with the Everett game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, Ken, yep. Ken Dops breakaway. Oh, it's just crushing because because Tri City looked good and had it uh, had it down attacking Everett's net, and all it took was one bounce of the puck, and Ken Dop was down on the other side of the ice, and it was. Exciting play, but I'm so, I was my heart was hurting for you a little bit. <laughs> well, you know, the fact of the matter is Everett has the Americans number when it comes to offensive um, opportunities. I looked at that game last night. Tal- Talon Boyko, uh, the 16 year old goalie, was incredible. Stopped like 51 of 54 or 55 shots or whatever. I mean, when you're putting up that many shots on goal, you're if you were to lose that game, you would look really bad. Um, yeah. Because I think the Americans, on the other hand, put up like 20. Now, that begs the question, like, I'm pretty sure Dustin Wolf was in net last night. Um, but it, it begs the question, maybe the Americans had the better opportunities, but they didn't have as many of them. You know what I'm saying? You know where I'm going with that? I mean, when, when the shot differential is like a minus 30 for your team, you're probably not going to win. So Yeah, for sure. Unless the shots you're taking are the right shots and that's uh you know the exception not the rule exactly we watched that friday and saturday both i mean they were both close games friday night you know the americans they lost in overtime to the winnipeg ice which is kind of weird to say winnipeg ice and not kootenay ice um (laughs) but the winnipeg ice ain't doing too bad this year either they aren't and the funny thing was was the guy that won it in overtime for winnipeg is a former tri-city american uh who celebrated from the goal line all the way out to the red line, man. He was so happy to score that game winner. Um, I'm serious. He, he was, oh, you could tell, you could tell. Um, and then the next night playing Kelowna was like a two, one loss, which Kelowna is a funny one. Now they, they stepped out on the ice and, and the buddy of mine in the same section looked around and, and said, this Kelowna team's kind of big. We're not used to that. When you watch Kelowna, usually they're, you know, skill speed skaters, but they're pretty big boys now. Yeah, they uh they look like a Saskatchewan team. Yeah, right. Yep, they got all the farmers out there. So, um, yeah, it's uh, U.S. divisions really starting to take shape though, as far as Everett and Portland. Portland's doing well. Uh, I don't know what the standings are. Um, I did see uh, what is it? The uh, Everett's got a game in hand on on Portland, and they're up by a point or two points. Yeah, I think Everett's uh. 16, five and one. And, um, and the winter Hawks are 15, five and one. Yep. So a yep. couple of points on them with a game in hand. So it looks like if things play out that way, like we might be watching those guys come play off time. Very, po- very possible. Uh, there for a while, I thought Spokane was going to struggle. They've, they've kind of gotten things back together. Um, uh, Portland, I good good for them. I didn't think they were going to do much this year, but good for them. Their young guys have really come together. When you have a, 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 a person like Mike Johnson leading the group, um, he's pretty good. Pretty good at what he does in the WHL. So, um, Not so much in the NHL level, which it made me kind of happy when he went to the Penguins and then didn't do so hot with the Penguins. So, <laughs> Yeah. That's just yeah. personal vendetta. It's all like... <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> I think I was happy. happy... To... Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, I was happy to see him not do too well with the Penguins as an Islanders fan. Oh, yes. oh, you're an Islanders fan, huh? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Died in the orange and blue for, <laughs> since before since before the dynasty years. And, you know, the worst thing is I'm an Islanders fan. Well, not right now. It's actually really good that I'm an Islanders fan for the yeah. first time in a while. And I'm a Mariners fan. So people Ouch. lament to me about sports teams, and I'm like, you have no idea. Yeah. Just really, really, unless you're, you know, a Maple Leafs fan. <laughs> yeah. That's another, that's, that's a, yeah. Our other podcast, we'll talk about that. That's a, that's a sinking ship. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I don't know. go ahead. 
I was going to say, I don't know, man. They uh, they seem to have turned it around since Bab left, so we'll see. They've only played a game or, yeah, a game. So we'll see if they uh, get their get their stuff together. But they certainly looked like they played better in that game than they had for weeks. That's true. So you never know. Sheldon Keefe has yet to experience a Maple Leafs loss, so uh, um, maybe he can keep it up for a while. I I just I feel bad for the fans that are paying three hundred bucks to go watch games there and not get a championship in return. But that's just a personal <laughs> thing, uh, right? <laughs> Uh, speaking of that, uh, for anybody listening, anybody cares, uh, the wife and I will be in Philadelphia. In, yeah, we will. In March to uh, to watch the uh, Flyers and Bruins play on a Tuesday night tilt. So we're pretty excited about that. That's awesome. Yeah, it was a early Christmas slash anniversary slash all that for the next five years present. Yep. <laughs> we're saving That's our good. nickels and dimes. <laughs> Considering, you know, you're on your on death's door this time last year. You know, it's good to hear that you've got some vacation plans. It's yeah. it's funny, man, cuz it's it, you're right. I mean, this time right now I was I was over there. We talked about it on another podcast I do this morning. Um I try not to think about it, but it does creep up in the back of my head and I am very very thankful that I'm not in that same place right now. So, so are we all, my friends. So are we all. <laughs> uh, real quick before we wrap up, um, NHL to Seattle, there was a few things that came out. You want to touch on those real quick? Yeah, yeah. Um, Ron Francis was on 31 Thoughts uh, with Elliot Friedman and Jeff Merrick. If you haven't listened to it, um, plug. Uh, go out and listen to it. Uh, some of the stuff that he was talking about, though, was um, hiring the right person for the right job. And when you look at their staff right now for hired positions, the NHL Seattle staff is about 45, 50% female. And that's, you know, across the board from uh, Alexandra Mandricki, who's the director of uh, hockey administration. So ops, uh, VP of finance, mobile app developer, social media, HR. And so it's not always the young girls coming up. We're always talking about them being players, but some of them may just be passionate about the game. And it's so incredible to see. Like one of the things I like as an Isles fan is their broadcast and analysis team has had women on it for the past few years. Mm. And they're, they aren't just, um, I hate to use the term, but window dressing. They are, which is awesome because that happens way too often. Right. So it's great to hear that uh, NHL Seattle is just putting their money where their mouth is and says, yeah, Cami Granato, we want you because you're the right person. Yes. Al- Alexander Mandricki, you may be the first female GM. We want you in here as our director of hockey admin. I so- think that's so awesome. And you know what? I think it's it's right time for it all. I mean, with, you know, the boycott, with the PWHPA, with the NWHL, like moving on, getting these investors and just women coming on to this new, you know, movement with Seattle. It's just so exciting and such good timing. Right. Yeah. They want to do Seattle NHL. Seattle wants to do stuff differently. Um, but, and they're certainly, certainly doing things differently from the yes. standard with moves like that. But either way, it's great for hockey Great for uh, great for the women that have been hired into those positions, and the people that aspire, the women that aspire to be mm-hmm. in positions like that for other teams. I do have um, a quick question. I don't know, maybe if you know the Wo Ho Pro Seattle, which I'm not gonna lie. Every time I see that hashtag, I think of women hoes. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. Gonna, I'm just gonna call it out. Every time I see that hashtag, I do a double take. And I'm like, okay, that's all I see is woman hoes. I'm like, okay, wait, no, that's not right. Anyways, moving on. Do they have any affiliation with NHL to Seattle? Uh, so not affiliation from a corporate perspective, but uh, the woman that I spoke about with Zoe Harris, yes, um, in the last pod. Uh, John Barr runs NHL Seattle and quit his job at Microsoft, I believe it was, to pursue getting an NHL team here and did that full time for wow. years. And so re- he he teaches our learn to play program on Sundays. Awesome. Um, so, so I'm lucky enough to call him a friend. Um, but within our organization, Zoe was our executive director and basically lived, ate and breathed mm-hmm. uh, with a. Washington Wild Female Hockey Association for years. And so affiliation, not properly, okay. but definitely, but definitely used that idea, that passion yeah. and, and leaned on her friendship with John um, to build that up. But Zoe doesn't really need 
anyone to build off of. She's uh, the uh, American College Hockey Association MVP trophy awesome. is named the, Zo- the Zoe M. Harris trophy. Um, she's She's got her chops. She was instrumental in WUFA getting out to the city council meetings to tell the youth hockey side of the story. So she originally named it NWHL to Seattle and launched it just prior to CWHL folding. So had to, (laughs) had to put, put the blanket on it and, and figure out what the next plan of attack was. Um, And so it's women's pro hockey, Seattle, they have an ambassador program. So she's really trying to, She's really trying to rally the troops and and get women's pro hockey to Seattle too. It's a perfect time for it. I think it's a perfect environment for it as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Before we wrap, uh, looks like the WWFHA did well. They came in first in their the fourteen U team uh, in their tournament on Veterans Day, which is awesome. Congrats to them. Uh, was their was their mascot in attendance that day? Their mascot was not in attendance. Their oh. mascot. Uh, their mascot has recently um, been hanging out with the uh, Major League Baseball mascots and was otherwise otherwise occupied. Okay. All right. Well, we'll leave it at yeah. that for now. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> um, and then real quick, uh, let's, let's definitely plan on talking more about college hockey. You kind of dropped a little bit in there. I've been really interested in following it a little bit more. I found out that most college hockey teams in the state of Washington are actually club teams. There's not actually like they're, they're not actually sanctioned, I guess is the word for it. Yeah. They're intramural club sports. Um, not, uh, not officially sanctioned. There's some pack eight teams, um, like, uh, and like ga- teams like ASU and things like that are playing and have a special official sponsorship, uh, UW hockey, Western Washington, those teams have been playing a lot of, uh, a lot of club hockey. So it's not officially tracked here and there, gotcha. but there, it's been a rough year for Western Washington hockey, actually Washington hockey altogether. Um, from a college level, I was looking at the standings recently and I was just like, wow, nope, nope, nope. Oregon seems to be doing well, um, which, you know, will give uh, oh, give God. a little bit of an, a needle in the side to anybody who's uh, in any Washington team. Um, but, yeah, they've been it's uh, a it, there's a whole lot to a whole lot of uh, stuff out there to follow no matter what part of the state you're in. Yeah, definitely. There, the hockey's out there. Um, there's plenty of local hockey to support for sure. Um, and, you know, we just we just love talking about it from the grassroots level here. So um, I think we're going to wrap it up for this this episode number two. We'll be back with everyone in three weeks. Or not three weeks. I'm sorry, in two weeks. I'm losing my head. This is the holiday season. It's just way <laughs> too much for me right now. Um any closing words for you? Well, let's hope that no more women hockey players say anything stupid. <laughs> that's that's probably a good wish. I think, uh, <laughs> because I think we haven't seen anything in the nearly two weeks since. I hope uh, I hope everybody was like, oh, Hill, come on now. Right? <laughs> somebody, somebody pulled her aside and said, your intentions were right on. Maybe not the best delivery. So Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure it's somebody that she's played with. No, oh, yeah, for <laughs> sure. I hope so. Anyway, so no, I got no closing remarks. Just I'm excited. We get to see the Riveters this weekend, and you can see Madison Packer. Woo! That's awesome. You and me, you and me both. The Ribs are the uh, Woofa uh, Junior in WHL, the Woofa sister team, and have been for nice. years. So I always like to see them do well. Yeah, well, let's root them on this weekend. Very cool. And for everyone listening, remember, if you're not a fan of women's hockey, then you're just a fan of men's hockey. You're not a fan of hockey in general. Keep that in mind. Damn straight. Booyah. All right, we're going to wrap it up today. Dan, thank you so much for your time, bro. Um, I know you got a lot going on, so go out there and play dad taxi for a little bit. Um, Babe, you got a lot going on. I ain't got nothing going on. I just sit here at my computer all day and pretty much hey (laughs) that's not fair all right thank you guys so much and uh we'll see everyone back here in two weeks all right see ya peace out